There are so many amazing spiritual teachers on YouTube. And now more than ever, I think that humanity desperately needs these teachers and their teachings. I made this video with the intent to share, to spread awareness of these beautiful beings and their wisdom teachings. It is not the point of this video to rank these teachers in any order or say who's number one. These are all beautiful beings and any one of them could be number one. With that being said, here we go. 10 more amazing spiritual teachers on YouTube. You don't have to do anything very special. You just uh, become aware of the fact that you are breathing in. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. And breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And I enjoy my in-breath. I enjoy my out-breath. And suddenly I find that I am truly alive, truly present. And this everyone can do. So mindful breathing can bring us back to our true home, to life. And we should be able to do it uh, in our daily life. From my point of view, the world of being in the world but not of the world, the world is a series of experiences that are given to me in order to awaken out of the illusion of my own separateness. Okay, as a, the, because I am not this body, I am in this body and this is part of my incarnation and I honor it, but that isn't who I am. When I'm asked what I teach by someone who doesn't know me or doesn't know my teaching, or doesn't know the words that are used in this particular subculture, the most direct answer I can give is that I simply teach that happiness is alive inside you. Peace is alive inside you. And however you may be looking for that, in outside events, if you're willing to stop that looking and turn your attention inside in the deepest way, deeper than your emotions or your thoughts or your feelings or any idea you have of yourself, you discover that the, the substance of yourself is happiness and peace and fulfillment. This is, we are not talking about religion. If we have more compassion, God will please. We are not talking that. As a Buddhist, if we practice compassion, Buddha will support us. I am not talking that. If we are a more compassionate person, I get more benefit. I will be more happier person. That's, that's the point. So if you say, what's left after enlightenment? It implies that there's this single sudden thing that somebody goes through, and there's a before and an after. Even if one had one of the uh, sudden types of experiences, uh, there's still a lifetime of working out the consequences of that, uh, improving behaviors, working through negative patterns. One shouldn't think uh, that there's like a there's like enlightenment and then there's <laughs> this after enlightenment thing. Uh, it can be more gradual for one thing, and even if it's sudden, um, you got a, a long, long way to go uh, after you've seen the no self. Uh, you've got to, that's just seeing the ox, okay? Look at the ox 30 pictures, you got to get on that ox, <laughs> got to ride that ox in daily life. I've spoken quite often about the fact that you could think of life kind of like a current. Upstream is an aspect of resistance. Downstream is an aspect of allowing. And everything you want is downstream. The answer to what would someone who loved themselves do is always downstream. And so, if you're constantly going downstream, you can do no other than to line up with your personal joy, the perfect partner if that's what you want 
all the career success and purpose you could possibly hope for. So this is about saying yes. This is about saying yes to where you are. This is about the yes, the yes to the present scene. The yes to the present scene. However imperfect this scene feels, however broken you feel, however, however much sadness there is or doubt or frustration or, or fear or longing, let's not make that into the enemy. Let's begin to see the, the supreme intelligence in this present scene. So it's not really the levels, it's not, it's not really the, the next thing that we long for. What we long for is the embrace of where we are. We are the only civilization, I think, since the very beginning that has not had a relationship with the sacred within creation at its core in the most simple and everyday activities. As a result, the center cannot hold. We've lost this balance. And so those who, who can hear this call, who can hear this cry of the earth, I feel we have a responsibility, a duty to to respond, to, to feel it within our hearts. First to feel it, and then to make a connection. And then to make a connection with the sacred within creation. It's not lost, it's just hidden. And we have to learn again to, well the Sufis call it, to open the eye of the heart, to, to feel with our soul. And then I think, however we live, in whatever way we live, we, we can make a very vital contribution. There is that in which all is arising, merely apparently, without necessity. The conscious light, one and only, indivisible, indestructible. This must be realized. There is only the true and very self-condition, the conscious light. Consciousness itself, self-existing and self-radiant, inherently divine, inherently egoless. Not a creator God, but the very self, the truth, reality itself, than which there is no other. There are two essential truths that need to be understood by us in this process of opening or awakening. One is that who we are is already the Buddha, that we carry within us the awakening and beauty and joy of our original or true nature. The second is that it is only through the transformation of the heart, through the remembrance of who we really are, of our original goodness, of our great heart of compassion, that the sorrows of the world can truly be transformed.